Now, it's home to almost a quarter of the animal species on Earth, somewhere we store our food and a sizable water purifier. Soil is vital in many ways for fresh food, but also in buffering climate change. It takes thousands of years to form, but can be destroyed in years. A UN report compiled by 300 scientists is sounding the alarm on the state of the world's soil. We can speak to one of the lead authors of that report now to get their perspective on it all. Richard Bardget, thanks so much for your time. Uh, can I start by asking you, Globally, I mean, how bad is it? Is Are we destroying soil across the planet or are there specific areas? Yeah, good morning. Um, well, the situation at present is that approximately a third of soils globally show some signs of degradation and quite a high proportion of those soils will be degraded to the extent that they're actually struggling to still grow crops. But the degradation is quite localized. So the severe degradation tends to occur in situations such as in parts of Africa, in parts of Asia, where there's been excessive agricultural management, for example, or there's not been overgrazing control, which has led to that form of degradation. So there are different types of degradation which are occurring in different parts of the world. And in Europe, um, we're not exempt from that, but the most severe forms of degradation are probably occurring in different other parts of the world. Now, before we get down to the exact causes and maybe uh, remedies for this degradation, give me a, a better idea of just how important soil is. Well, I, I would always argue that few things matter more to humans than their relationship with soil. I mean, put simply, we rely on soil to produce food. But we also need soil to store carbon. It plays a key role in the global carbon cycle and is key to climate mitigation. It filters our water and purifies that water. And I think one of the things that the report emphasizes, that it's also home to a vast diversity of the organisms that live on the earth. You mentioned the statistics before, something like a quarter of all species on earth live in the soil. So it's really bumbling with life. It's teeming with life. And we walk around with this pretty much out of sight and out of mind. Indeed, uh, taking it uh, so much for granted so often. Let's go back then to the causes of the current degradation. You mentioned agriculture. So over farming, I imagine a big part of the problem, the chemicals or pesticides we use. I mean, where exactly are things going wrong and how easily can things be adapted on that level? Yeah, well, I think the biggest cause globally is land use change, uh, deforestation, for example, conversion of grasslands to arable lands, which is occurring in many parts of the world, and also intensification of agriculture, which is occurring over the last 40, 50 years in many parts of the world, including Europe. But there are other factors like climate change in many parts of the world, again, including Europe, we have increased droughts, which are occurring annually, and they're causing damage to soils and also the loss of carbon from soils, which actually erodes their fertility. We've got pollution, soil sealing, vast amounts of soil around the world, but in particular in parts of Europe, are actually sealed as a result of urbanisation every year. And once you seal the soil with tarmac or a building, that soil and its functions are effectively gone. So soil is actually confronted with many different pressures. Some of them are acute pressures and some of the more sort of gradual pressures which affect the soil very much over time. And I think the key thing to remember about soil, which is something you mentioned at the start, that it's actually a non-renewable resource. It takes thousands of years for soils to form, but we can lose it literally within a few years. Indeed, and in a, in a way, in recent years, we've been focused more, more on deforestation rather than that soil degradation and even soil erosion. Uh, you mentioned there climate change. And just this week, we've seen a One Planet Summit. We've seen 50 countries promise to protect 30 percent of the planet. Greta Thunberg was pretty clear in her thoughts on this. If we look at her tweet from, uh, from how she saw it, she said, blah, 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 basically. Uh, I'm wondering, what's your take on these annual get-togethers? Do you think that there's a governmental will to act? Well, I think there is a will to act, but there are also many barriers that need to be overcome to actually put in place those actions. And I think the key thing is that you know, people can discuss these issues and they can talk about policies that are needed to actually protect soils. But I think the point 
I would certainly make, and I think my colleagues would make, is that it's an urgent issue. It's like with climate change, soil degradation, many of these issues are things that we can't afford to deliberate over. We need action now. I mean, if you just think about soils, rates of soil degradation are extremely high. They're accelerating in many parts of the world, and something needs to be done to stop that degradation and also to restore the soils that are already degraded. So, you know, we need, we need action now. I think politicians are becoming increasingly aware of the importance of soil, which is a good thing, and I certainly recognize that as a scientist who works in that area, but we need action now. Indeed, and that often comes down to the cost, even, you know, the immediate cost compared to the long-term cost of not acting. Uh, but in the interim, can individuals make a significant difference in what they do? I, I think they can. I mean, I think I think at a border level, there are certain things that governments can do now. I think we need to increase awareness, for example, among the general public, but also in policy. Uh, and as you referred to, really, in policy, that requires money. It requires incentives to actually encourage people or reward people for managing the soil differently. But at, at a local level, I think individuals can also make a difference, whether um, anyone who has a garden, for example. I mean, gardens are actually a hotspot of carbon very often. They're also a hotspot of biodiversity. I mean, many gardens are managed extremely well. And individuals can recycle nutrients. They can make sure that ground is covered, for example, with crops, which is actually taking up carbon into the soil and fueling the many organisms that live there. So I think as an individual, we can do an awful lot. But I think the, the key challenge is to increase awareness because most people, not through any fault of their own, but they walk around and they don't actually appreciate the value and importance of the soil and also the vibrancy of that soil in terms of the diversity that actually lives there. Indeed, the richness and life beneath our feet. So, Professor Richard Barget, thanks so much uh, for your time and getting up so early there in the UK to give us your expertise. Much appreciated. It's a pleasure. Thank you. Thank you. You're watching Live from Paris here on France 24. If you're just joining us, these are our top stories. The charge of inciting an insurrection filed U.S. Democrats move forward on the impeachment of Donald Trump. The resolution now set for debate. South Africa closes its borders for at least a month as it struggles with an unprecedented rise in COVID-19 infections. A new strain there is thought to be more contagious than an earlier variant.